everyone, it's Libby from Meister Tarot. I'd like to acknowledge the Warami First Nations people. It's W-O-R-I-M-I. And welcome to you, your guides, my guides, and the universal energies. Uh, what I'm doing today is I'm I'm doing some spiritual readings on uh, questions that you guys brought forward to me uh, the last a couple, from a couple of weeks ago when I was looking at some various various aspects from around the world. And what I want to have a look at in this particular reading are the whales. So one of you has asked me, are the whales of the keepers of the, of the Gaia records, the earth records uh, of our ancestors? Now, Gaia is the personification of earth, of our earth mother. It is the, the web of all that is living organisms, uh, living organisms and their interaction with the inorganic surroundings, the synergy and the complex system that maintains our earth in the uh, in this um, in a balanced status. Now, what's happening is our earth is out of balance at the moment uh, due to various reasons that you don't need me to go into because you will all be fully aware. Um, but it is very much about our Mother Earth is at the moment trying to rebalance. That's why we're having the massive heat, the um, uh, the flooding, uh, the um, the volcanic eruptions that are happening. It's all about Mother Earth trying to rebalance herself into um, a new stable environment. But to do so, she needs to go through this period of what feels like uh, a disruptive events because she's trying to bring us back onto even kilter. So entertainment only, so I want to have a look at the whales. Now, what has happened on the east coast of Australia, love the whales. Um, I have been out on boats when the whales have been breaching and, and, uh, and dancing, for want of a better word, through the water around us. I've stood on headlines and watched mothers and calves bypass us. The uh, humpback whales they pass up and down the east coast from Antarctica through to the warm waters of Queensland and back again as part of their um, their uh, um, their their re I, for whatever reason they're telling me they're stopping me and they're saying rebirthing cycle part of their rebirthing cycle. So what has happened with the whales off the east coast of Australia? They were hunted nearly to extinction going back 100, 150 years ago. There are still some countries that are hunting the whales around Antarctica under the guise of scientific research. Uh, however, those whales seem to end up on the uh, being offered on tables or in vending machines or whatever else in certain parts of the world. But I'm really thrilled to see that there is pushback against the consumption of whale meat um, from those particular parts of the world, basically just saying no. And when there is no demand any longer, there will the, it will make the supply unviable and you'll find those uh, whaling expeditions will die off. But what happened is the whales down the east coast of Australia were uh, decimated to less than 2,000, I believe, uh, still still um, in the wild. Those numbers are now reaching 40, 50, 60,000 each year making that migration. But what is also happening, and this is bringing us to this next level of awareness with the whales, is that, uh, and it, for example, was on the news last night of uh, a whale that had gotten tangled in fishing cable. So the the uh, big, massive commercial trawlers that became entangled in fishing cable. The trained staff from SeaWorld on the Gold Coast in, in Queensland spent three days attempting to remove the cable. The images were abs of the damage to the whale were horrific where the cable had cut through. 
Uh, the staff said, yes, we got rid of the, the worst of it, but they do not feel that it was a success with that particular whale because they didn't manage to get rid of all the entanglement from the whale. So uh, what's happening now is we are reaching this next level. This is, uh, I keep saying we get the feather around the head and if we don't take any notice of that we get a rock thrown at us and if we take no notice of that we get a Mack truck literally bowling us over and this is now we're going through into this next step this next stage first of all was the awareness of the the whaling then it was the awareness of the beauty of these animals and the message that they are imparting to us and now we're at this stage where uh, we are being confronted with our own our decisions and how they are affecting uh, these creatures on this greater web of biodiversity on our planet. There was a whale, uh, hasn't been seen for many years, called Migaloo, uh, became a, a huge symbol of hope. Migaloo uh, came um, into being around the time that there was more awareness of uh, the strife the danger that these whales were in uh, and became an absolute symbol of hope. Migaloo was a white whale, uh, pure white, not albino, but he was almost like a white buffalo calf woman. He was a pure white whale. Hasn't been seen for many years, but his offspring are now, again, more white whales or whales that have really distinctive white markings on them that was not normal for uh, that uh, breed of whale are becoming visible up and down the coast. And it just gladdens my heart. So entertainment only, uh, I just do that for legal reasons. I'm drawn to use the star seed oracle. So I'm just going to have a look further. Now, literally all I've written down is whale keep whales Keepers of the Gaia, Gaia Records. Now, I do apologise if I've pronounced that wrong, but that's how I've been told to pronounce it, Gaia Records. Are they cash, also known as the Akashic Records? And I've written down, literally, that's all I've written down, and an arrow pointing to whale song. So there are scientists out there at the moment trying to decipher the rich and intensity of the whale song. They feel they are making progress. Uh, these are an intelligent creature who have so much history to share uh, that have been around since before humanity even stood upright. So what I'm feeling a draw to is to do a energies reading rather than a Celtic cross and energy reading, what is the message that the whales have for us, the keepers of the records? Okay, thank you. Okay. Very much about awareness about what we are doing to the environment. What message? The awareness of the krill fishing. It's a huge market. Okay. Okay, what I'm getting, the me a message I'm getting is we need to cease the, cease the krill fishing. So what's happening? If you're taking fish oil tablets or krill oil tablets or something like that, uh, what is happening is that there's overfishing of the krill, which is causing starvation, malnutrition. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. What I'm being told is it's too easy to take from the wild. Okay, this is the message. This is actually a bigger message than just the krill. I'm being told it is too cheap and easy to take from the wild. The lesson for humanity right at this time is we have to 
create for ourselves. Okay, how do I put that? I'm talking about plantation forests rather than just clear felling old growth forests. I am being told it's about uh, using the resources we already have at hand. So recycling. I'm being shown the Coca-Cola can. I bought this up, I think, two weeks ago. Down the road from me is there is a, it was an old tip from the 1960s. And what happened is sea erosion opened up a side of that tip. And out of that tip, aside from all the awful stuff like asbestos, um, there was a Coca-Cola can that looked as pristine as the day it was thrown away. Now, I'm not blaming Coca-Cola, but they are the major producers of one of the major producers and users of plastic across their range of products, Coca-Cola Amatol. Um, but we're talking about a can that was 50 years old and looked as pristine coming out as it was when it went in. So I would have been six when that can was thrown away. It well, it's aged a lot better than I have. But it is very much about reusing. We do not have an infinite supply of, of, of natural resources to take. This is about commercial... Okay, thank you. I'm seeing big aquaculture tanks to produce krill. If we want to consume these products, we need to know how to create them for ourselves, not take from the wild. And I'm again, I'm seeing the plantation forests rather than the clear felling. Now, I'm not saying don't eat meat. I like meat. Um, I, but I'm trying to reduce the amount of meat I eat. I try and. Uh, Purchase sustainable, free range, eggs, chickens, meat. Always tastes better as well. I'm just going to put it out there. Tastes a heck of a lot better. Um, I grow plants, uh, vegetables and fruit in my yard. Waiting to harvest my first coffee. Looking forward to that. Um, not saying you can all do it and everybody will do it. This is just very much about being conscious of where our consumption products come from, is what I'm being told. Okay, and that there is this need for a shift. What's that? Oh, and they want this card fell out and they wanted me to show it to you. Deep cellular healing, physical and emotional healing of Mother Earth, of Gaia, of the web of creation on which we all live. Okay, 13 minutes in and I haven't even drawn a card, but the cards are a prompt. This is a message that, that the whales want me to bring out for you. Awareness of what we are consuming. Ooh, and they threw this one out. The earth school. Soul growth, higher learning, the life lessons. We are at earth school. We are learning. We have switched ourselves off with an arrogance that we have nothing to learn from all these other beings on our planet and in the universe, but we have so much to learn, so much to touch, to feel. I'm not talking about physically, I'm talking about, um, I'm not talking literally, I'm talking um, metaphorically. We have had this arrogance that we are 
superior beings and we have nothing to learn. We have so much to So show me. Show me what message. What message do you have for us, the keepers of the records, the whales? What is the message that you want to impart to us today? Then shine an image of a blue whale. Gliding through the ocean. Living in harmony with its surrounds. What message do you have for us? Message. I just feel intense love, heart connection. I don't want to step out of it. It's so beautiful. It's just encompassing. Okay, let's see what message they have for us. Whew, that, that energy, I don't know if you felt it from where you were. It was powerfully intense and so full of love that I just feel like bursting into tears. Okay, the first card out, baby steps. Action. Follow your intuition before it makes sense. This is very much about taking one step after another. Reminds me of the light seers uh, or a deck, tarot deck with the um, with the stairway up to our future. We cannot change everything overnight. It is one step at a time. And if that means that you choose uh, to drop a night a week from eating uh, meat or you choose to buy less but free range or you choose to um, uh Recycle your products. You choose a recycled product. Okay, whatever it is, one step at a time. One step at a time. There's no express elevator to this to the top. But the first step is questioning everything. Lifting the veil, lifting the veil on what we have been fed. Now, I'm not talking about food fed, but what we have been fed by those that perhaps have vested interests. Do we really need krill oil tablets or is eating an avocado a week sufficient? Um, this is very much about lifting the veil and questioning everything, anything, anything unaligned must go. So if it is not part of what you are being called to do as part of each little step that you need to take, let it go. Do you really need to buy that, whatever it is, online? I need a new microphone, but the old one will suffice. Do you really need to um, spend that money on that brand name, whatever it is? I'm not questioning your choices, but I am asking you, 
to lift the veil and question everything. Is it necessary in your life? Does it serve a purpose for you going forward? Does it fill a need? And where does that come from? Where does that item come from? And it, this can also include people in your life as well. People, objects, preconceived ideas, ancestral history. Making small steps and questioning along the way. The energy behind the message from the whales is this card again. We are at Earth School. We are learning the lessons. We are learning our soul growth. We are learning. We are becoming more informed. And we are the golden children that is bringing forth the tenderness, the innocence and the rare gifts to step through the portal to our future. All of us. Every single one of us. We are the chosen ones to be here at this time. And we have chosen to be here at this time. To step through, to guide through to this future. The energies coming out of Earth School is emphatic starseed, energetic sovereignty, absorbing what's not yours. Okay, this is reminding me of the card that was in the White Buffalo Calf Woman reading about looking in the mirror. What is it that we, within ourselves, are taking into ourselves? And I'm not talking just physically, I'm talking about ideas, I'm talking about knowledge, I'm talking about relationships, I'm talking about emotions. What is it that we within ourselves are we absorbing that is not right for us, that is not who we are? As we un have this deeper understanding of earth and our part with it, our connection with it and our place within it. This, um, the golden children, all of us being uh, brought forward with our gifts to guide us through to this future. We are on a double mission. We are all light workers. We are all star seeds. We come from stardust. We will return to stardust. And we serve in the world by being who we are meant to be. Comes back to that divergence point. Choosing the path that we are meant to be on versus what appears to be the easy path. But the easy path leads to no growth, compromise, despair. The karma hanging over. Oh my goodness. The whale and orca elders is the karma that's hanging over us in this reading at the moment. Share your song, the frequency of the sound, and dive deep. This is the message, this is the karma that the whales are bringing to us. To dive deep, to get in touch with our, the true depths of our soul purpose and why we have chosen to be here in the here and now and share that message. The second karma. Now it does say wait. It's not yet time. Things are being woven. So what this is telling me is the second karma is we are so close to this future coming forward, but we're not there yet. We need to learn what we need to learn before we can step through. Things are being woven. Think 
time the time is coming quickly and we need to be prepared to step through into this new world this new life this new energy so this is very telling this is telling to me that we need to go through this process first so that we are ready so that when the time is right we've already done the work so the message going forward is about being part of Earth, being Earth, connection with Earth, Earth's connection with us, learning how to be human again. We seem to have forgotten how to be human. We've become parasitical consumers instead. Okay, where did that come from, guys? We need to learn how to be human again and the core of being human. And the core of being human is being in balance with our surroundings. We need to be in, in, in touch with Mother Earth, learn how to be human and in the world not of it, not separate to it. We need to be part of. Now, it doesn't matter whether you live in a concrete jungle or you live out on a vast acreage. We can all touch, be part of Mother Earth. Drop the wildflower seeds in the cracks in the pavement. Put a, put a tree in a pot on your front stoop. Have a basil plant growing on your windowsill. They are all part of being in contact with earth. I was uh, talking to Danny Shea the other week. Couple of, oh, probably a month or so back, and I got a really deep pull to tell him to go star bathing. Needless to say, he took himself <laughs> what we would call going bush a couple of times. I got a real pull to tell him to go and be with the stars and star bathe. It may mean going to your local park and sitting under and in the energy of a tree. It may mean uh, eating a fruit that you have, a fruit or a vegetable or whatever it is that you have grown. It may be if you get the opportunity, take your shoes off and walk on the grass. We need to learn how to earth ourselves again. Trust the timing. We are where we are meant to be here and now because this is where we are meant to be here and now. Trust the wave you came in on and time is not running out. Trust that this message is coming to you as you need to hear it. And it doesn't matter how young or old you are, you still have time. Time is not running out to bring about this learning and your change, your droplet of change in the vast ocean. Understanding that you're not for everyone. Embrace your weirdness. Face your true north. Be true to yourself. Do not dim to fit in. Do not compromise yourself for others. If those around you do not bring you, buoy you up, bring you up, support you no matter what, seek out a new tribe. Do not be afraid of being alone while you are going through the seeking process. 
understand that blood does not make you family and that if those around you are no longer um, uh, serving a fulfilment for you, you, it's okay to let them go. I'm a huge believer in that we meet people who for whatever period of time that we need to learn something from or they need to learn something from us or we're serving a purpose in each other's lives and once that purpose and lesson is over, it's okay to let go. And whether it's someone who's been in your life for 30 years or three minutes, it's okay to let go. You are not for everyone. Embrace your weirdness, be true to yourself and face your true north as we go forward. And this is part of learning to be human again. Because we are going to be part of an activated earth. Power places, ley lines, trust where you're led. Trust your instincts, trust your guides, trust where you are led because we are entering an era where Mother Earth is trying to correct herself. She is activated. She is actively correcting herself and we can choose to be part of it or we can choose to fight against it. I am loving these cards. But part of this journey is it is not for you to carry the weight of the world. You need to put up boundaries and let go of what you have no influence over. It's not yours to carry the fear, the worry, the despair. It is yours to be the inspiration to be to be the example and that example comes from love you've got the love and this is the love i was feeling from the blue whale it was incredibly powerful i hope you felt that come through to you but this is the message i've got today from the whales. I know I'm not saying anything. I feel like I'm getting this communication in my mind and it's not for me to say because it is for you to tune in and pick up for yourself. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I know that was an unusual reading. It's the message the whales have got for me, for you. So I'd love to you all. Huge love. We've got this. It's about being true to ourselves. It's about taking baby steps. That was the dog sneezing, if you heard it. It's about taking baby steps. It's about doing what we can do and putting down what we can't. It's about surrounding ourselves with positivity. It's about understanding where our products come from, what we are consuming and what um, what uh, influence how we are confu- consuming has on the world. Okay. Love to you all. Take care.